So if you're like me, you've probably read countless articles, you've seen countless diagrams, you've watched countless videos that all explain how balanced audio works. Well, prepare to have your mind at least expanded a little bit because while just about everything that you've seen was kinda right, they're all kinda wrong. First, the intro video. I don't like intro videos. We're all surrounded by electromagnetic radiation. It's everywhere. And the only way that we can make anything useful out of this electromagnetic radiation is with an antenna. Any metal wire acts as an antenna. So yeah, this is an antenna and uh, this is an antenna and this is an antenna. Just like the things that we want to be antennas, the wires that we're using to connect audio devices are going to be exposed to the same radio waves that are all around us and they're going to want to produce the electrical currents in those wires. Since none of those currents are things we want in our audio signal, for shorthand we're just going to call those electrical currents noise. So, if our goal with an audio cable is to get our signal from one piece of gear to another piece of gear without it changing along the way, how do we keep this noise from getting into our wires? Well. To illustrate that, I'm going to go to my analog telestrator. Let's pretend this is our wire. And just so we are clear, it's just a wire. One strand of copper. So we're trying to keep this evil noise that's everywhere and all around, all trying to get into our wire. And we want to make sure that that doesn't get into our wire. How do we do it? Well, the first strategy is defense. We can shield the wire. So we can, you've probably seen wires that have like a little shield around them and it's metal shield that goes around the wire and will help shield the signal a little bit, make sure that there's not quite as much noise going in. And that's one strategy. Another strategy, we can just move the wire farther away from where the noise is coming from. That helps um, some. The last thing that we can do is just make sure that the signal that we cram into this is loud enough that by the time it gets to the output, even though a little bit of noise is leaked in, we're still getting mostly signal and not a whole lot of noise. All those things are valid. That all works, but as you can see, we still have a little bit of our noise in our signal, and that's not what we want. So, the next strategy, that piece of paper hit my guitar. The next strategy is offense. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna say that we've got our device A and our device B, and we've got our single piece of wire going between the two. Well, what if, instead of just one piece of wire, we used two wires? And what if, on this end, we were to attach those two wires to a, some sort of magical device that would ignore everything that on those wires was the same and only amplify the things that were different. It would be great if we had a device like that and it turns out that it's an extremely common piece of electronics called a differential amplifier, which you'll never guess, amplifies differences. And so we've got our noises that are happening everywhere and they're trying to get into our wires but as long as they're arriving at box B, identical amounts of noise, our differential amplifier is gonna say, I don't see a difference between these two wires, and it's not going to amplify those things. So that's great, but how do we make sure that the amount of noise that comes through both of these wires and arrives in our differential amplifier is exactly the same because remember anything that's even slightly different is going to be amplified well the key it turns out is that both of our wires need to have the same impedance and that is a fancy electronics word that for the purposes of what we're talking about here 
is really just how sensitive are these wires to these electromagnetic noises that are in the air and how much are they going to absorb and carry through. One of the things that affects impedance of a wire is the length of the wire. That's pretty easy. We can keep the two wires the same length. Another thing that affects the impedance of the wire is the thickness or gauge of the wire. Again, that's pretty easy. We can just make sure that these two wires are identical. The last thing that can affect the impedance of our two wires is what they are attached to on either end. So again, as long as they're both attached to the same circuitry in both sides, then the two wires will end up having the same impedance. And that's the magic sauce that we need. Impedance matched load. So this is great. Now we've got wires going from our two devices of device A and device B. And we're de delivering an output that has no noise on it because of our differential amplifier. But we're still not passing signal. We're still not getting any audio from A to B. How do we get our audio signal from A to B? It turns out all we need to do to get an audio signal from A to B is to just put audio signal on one of those wires. So if we put an audio wave, an audio signal on one wire, then this differential amplifier is going to say, wait, there's a difference between this wire and that wire. And the difference is this gold wave. So all I have to do is output this same gold wave. And just like that, I've got audio with no noise coming out of my differential amplifier going into my piece of equipment B. Glory hallelujah, we've got balanced audio. Balanced audio, balanced audio. Now I already can hear you, I already know. Getting the comments, I can literally hear you typing from here. Don't we have to put a reverse polarity signal on the other wire and don't we have to run it through a transformer? Don't we have to, to flip it one way and then flip it the other way? And no, the short version is no, we do not have to. We can, and that will still work, but we don't have to. So we could, if we wanted to try to, and I'm a bad drawer, so I'm doing my best. Just pretend that these are identical, but in reverse polarity to each other. We could put that signal on that second wire. So the differential amplifier will see it as twice as different and will consequently put out more signal, but the signal will be identical to if there were no signal on this second line at all. So that's it. That's all we really need to have balanced audio. We need two pieces of wire that are exactly the same impedance with signal on one of those wires and a differential amplifier on the other end. The other thing you may have noticed is I haven't talked about a ground wire between these two things. A lot of us know that a microphone cable has these two inner wires, but it also has a shield wire around the whole concoction, typically. Well, guess what? I don't need this shield wire for my balanced audio to work and for my noise to be canceled out. So to finish up, I know I haven't talked about transformers. I haven't talked about electronically balanced circuitry and how that compares to transformers. I haven't talked about why you would ever use an unbalanced connection because sometimes you would. There's a lot of details that I haven't talked about and we're going to save that for later videos. So look for that. In the meantime, as with all my videos, I've planted several minor inaccuracies in here just to see who can find them. And cause I like to see people do the comments. So, please feel free to share with me what you found. If you have other questions specifically about this topic so that when I'm building my next video, I know what it is that I should talk about, please share that. If you like it, hit like. If you don't, hit subscribe. If you really, really don't like it, then share it with all your friends and heckle me because then my views go up. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot for listening. I will see you next time. 
and why they don't work the things. Balanced audio connections and why they don't control. It's getting into your body. How? The last step is read the text on. Uh, I can't draw all this stuff. So what do we do? We get more paper. Because I am literally out of paper. Well, that's a dumb thing. 